It's October, which means it's the spooky month once again. Only this time, I'm doing a video and not Billy. Huh. Usually he's the one that covers the ooky spooky sort of stuff. Oh, that's why we're talking about Goosebumps. Huh. It's been about a year since we've talked about this series, and in fact, the subject of that video, I Live in Your Basement, will be a big part of today's video, so I guess it kind of comes full circle, sort of. For a little bit of a nostalgia boost, as well as a need to listen to something when I go out for walks, I've been listening to some of the audiobooks for the series. That and watching some of the TV episodes from time to time, because I just so happen to have some on VHS recordings. Yeah, original airings and everything. So, given the fact that October is coming up, and that I've been delving into the series once more, I felt that it was finally time to make the Goosebumps video that I always wanted to make. Talking about the Goosebumps books that time forgot. In other words, the Unprinted! These are three Goosebumps books, formerly four, that never seemed to make it into circulation after the initial boom. See, Goosebumps started getting reprinted with new art and new covers and all that sort of stuff. But these did not. Nor were they brought back during the reboot in 2007 to promote Goosebumps Horrorland, and they weren't even reprinted to promote the movies. These books are Werewolf Skin, I Live in Your Basement, Monster Blood 4, and formerly The Legend of the Lost Legend. Why did these go out of print? Why were they never put back into production after Goosebumps got popular again? Well, let me tell ya. First, before we go into this, I just want to say that while this may be a theory, I think it's the closest thing we're ever going to come to a real answer. Let's face it, R.L. Stein is not the one who's in charge of these reprints, that's Scholastic and Parachute Press. So you can't really accost him at a fan gathering and go, Why we never got I Live in Your Basement again? I want to see it again, please! You're not going to get the answers you want, or any answers. You're probably just going to get a restraining order. So with that being said, let's take a look at the books themselves. These books are notable for being very strange entries into the Goosebumps lineup, at least in comparison to the rest of the original 62. Sure, Goosebumps is known for being a very strange series, given the fact that it's, you know, horror-based and written in a month. But these three, slash four in particular, are very unique, let's just say. Not as much for Monster Blood 4, it's more strange than unique, and, well, alright, we'll get there when we get there. So, let's start off with the first, and probably least important in this lineup, Legend of the Lost Legend, or as I call it... I never got this one. Never. Not even when I was a little kid. It's not creepy, it's not spooky, it's not even really that interesting. It's about this guy leading his kids all throughout the woods to look for this thing called the Lost Legend, which, according to the legend of said Lost Legend, it's supposed to be the greatest story ever told. The only thing is, when they find it, they pick it up and then lose all their memories and just start wandering around the woods forever until someone can take the tale away from them. So it's kind of a vicious cycle sort of thing. I think this would have worked best as a short story. I mean, honestly, there's nothing remarkable about this whatsoever, aside from the fact that it's really rare. But let's talk about something that's a lot more exciting, werewolf skin. Despite the fact that it's another Goosebumps werewolf story, it has absolutely nothing to do with the Werewolf of Fever Swamp. In fact, it has an entirely different mythology for werewolves than that book. In this one, instead of transforming at the full moon outright, the werewolves had to go find their skins, put them on, and then transform into the evil werewolves. I like this book a lot. I think it's one of the better books that Stein wrote in the original 62. It's dark, it's fun, it's mysterious, and it's got a really nasty twist ending. So what's not to love? Though I will say it's not my favorite book in the series, because that honor goes to the next one, I Live in Your Basement. In fact, I love this one so much that I actually made an audiobook for it. Link in the description. What an interesting book this is, but also one that really messes with your head. It's hard to figure out what's going on. We talked about this last year, but if you didn't see that video, let me give you the Cliff Notes version, okay? The best way I can describe I Live in Your Basement is if Inception had body horror. Yeah, there are a few scenes of a kid or monster or something vomiting his guts out and then that pile of guts, just the creature. It's got some kind of crazy reality warping powers and it wants a slave for all eternity. It's 
it's a lot. It's a real ride. Then we get to the last one, Monster Blood 4. Yeah, uh, this is, uh... uh... This was the last book in the original 62, and this was not a good one to go out with. I don't like to agree with the really cringy, overly critical, I'm better than you blog, blogger beware, but this really is just gremlins. No exaggeration, it's about blue monster blood this time instead of the usual green stuff, because I guess Stein thought he kinda used up all the story potential with the original green slime? I don't know. But this time, it's this little slug monster thing, and if you get it wet, it multiplies and then causes all kinds of trouble. Yeah, it's gremlins. It's just gremlins. So, in terms of the original four unreprinted, two are good and two are... not horrible, but not great either. But is the quality really why we never got reprints? I don't think that's true. Because again, Werewolf Skin and I Live in Your Basement, in my opinion, they're good books. Werewolf Skin even got an adaptation in the Goosebumps TV show. Then again, even those two good books I mentioned, they're not necessarily... how should I put this, uh... Usual. Werewolf Skin is a considerably dark book by Goosebumps standards, and I Live in Your Basement would make no sense to an eight-year-old. That and all the gore would probably not make parents very happy. Oh, somebody please think of the children! But I don't think that's enough. We still have other dark books like The Haunted Mask or Ghost Camp, and they were reprinted just fine. There are also other adventure-based books that we still got, such as How I Got My Shrunken Head or Beware the Snowman. And let's be real, quality is not a reason to get reprinted. I don't think that it's possible for Monster Blood 4 to get discontinued, but not have Monster Blood 3 and How I Learned to Fly not meet the same fate. Here's what I think the real reason is, though. Bad sales records. What do Werewolf Skin, I Live in Your Basement, and Monster Blood 4 have in common? They were the final three Goosebumps books in the original series before Stein moved on to Series 2000. You know why he made Series 2000? To drum up interest in the series once again. Goosebumps was huge. Starting at Let's Get Invisible, this thing was a phenomenon. Basically, every kid seemed to love the series. But like all fads, it kind of faded away. Goosebumps still had its fans and a lot of people still loved it, but sales were not nearly as high. And when it got really bad, Stein decided to shake things up with Series 2000. Even though Series 2000, in all honesty, wasn't really that different from the original series, it seemed like he more just wanted a new label. Given the fact that they were right at the end, these three books probably didn't do all too well. Especially when the shiny new Series 2000 was well on its way. Who cares about these last three books when these new, bigger, supposedly scarier books were right around the corner? Besides, it's not like Werewolf Skin, I Live in Your Basement, and Monster Blood 4 are gonna disappear forever. They'll be here for a long, long time to pick up and read whenever we want. As for Legend of the Lost Legend, I wouldn't be surprised if that one didn't sell either. It's not exciting and it's not scary, so what's the point? It did get reprinted later as part of our Retro Classics collection, but that's all we got. Also, it is worth noting that Phantom of the Auditorium had the same fate, even though that seemed to be a well-liked book. It even got a stage play a few years ago, but it's since been reprinted in the Goosebumps Classics line, so I guess all sins are forgiven. As for the unreprinted, I don't think that they'll ever come back. The sales figures must have been really bad if they're not getting reprinted even now that they've got this mystique around them. In fact, that actually might be another reason why Scholastic is doing this. Maybe to build up some kind of hype for when they eventually reprint them going, The Unreprinted are finally here at last! The first chance you can buy them on the shelf since the late 90s. But I don't think that's the case. It's just an idea, but really? What point would there be in doing that? To drum up sales for secondhand markets? They don't make a penny off of that, why should they care? With publishers like these, it always comes down to money. What will give them the most money? What will give them the most exposure? What will give them the best reputation? Reprinting books that sold terribly is probably not the right answer. 
And especially given the fact that Stein is making more Goosebumps books today, what's the point of reprinting these old ones when you got new ones to drum up more interest? These are books that no one has ever read before. These are brand new tales. These old ones? Yeah, they're dark, they're weird, they rip off gremlins. Why bother? Do I see these books ever making a comeback? If Legend of the Lost Legend can be reprinted, I guess anything's possible, but don't hold your breath. So those were the unreprinted, aka the Goosebumps books that time forgot. They seem to come out at just the wrong time, you know? Right at the time when Goosebumps was starting to lose its popularity, and possibly hitting an all-time low. But that doesn't change the fact that at least two of these books are really standout entries that, if you can find them at your local thrift store, I'd say you should check them out. And I say thrift store because don't hold out for eBay. These things go for ridiculous prices sometimes. I mean, look at this. Look at this. Well, folks, thanks for watching the video. What'd you guys think? Have you ever read these books before? What's your favorite book in the unreprinted series? And why do you think they never came back out? Comment below and let us know because we're always excited to hear what you guys have to say. And right here, you can see the names of our Patreon executive producers rolling across the screen. And guess what? You can be just like them if you donate $5 a month to our Patreon. Link in the description below if you ever want to check it out. We also have a monthly raffle where for $2 a month, you can enter to have your idea for a Media Mementos video come to life. So, yeah, if that's what you want to do, feel free to donate. If not, well, I sure wasted your time, didn't I? <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching, folks, and we'll see you guys next time.